But we're going to focus actually in verse 21. But let us read this together. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Starting from verse uh, 12. Okay? The Bible says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and over you in the Lord, and admonish you. Please read verse 13. Verse 14, now we exhort your brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the people minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Rejoice evermore. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Despise not prophesying. Abstain from all appearance of evil. In verse 23, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're going to include verse 24, faithfully see that call it you, who will also will do it. Father God in heaven, once again, we thank you for this very precious moment to this group of people that you bind together through your spirit and through your love and through your word. We thank you for giving them 15th year of celebrating your faithfulness, your goodness in their lives. And we believe that there are so many things and good things you shed to come in this church. Lord, as we focus on this verse that they use as a theme verse for this year, may you open our eyes once again so that may we behold wondrous things out of your word so that we will see ourselves what we should do for this year as their church. Bless this for your honor and glory. We will give you all the praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay? Starting from verse 16 up to verse uh, 22 of this in, verses, in this chapter. Our eight good spiritual discipline that a healthy Christian should practice in their life every day. If you want to be a healthy Christian, you need to follow this eight spiritual discipline. Okay? Actually, it is not a suggestion. It is a command. It means that we need to do it. If you are going to fail to do it, then we are disobedient Christian. Starting from verse uh, 16, the Bible says, Rejoice evermore. So we should be rejoicing every day. Amen? As some Christian, it's hard for them to rejoice. I don't know why. But we have all the reason why to rejoice. You can Count so many things that the Lord has done in your life that will give you reason to rejoice. Are you saved? Amen. If you are 100% sure of heaven, then every day it is a time of rejoicing. Amen. Rejoice evermore. The Bible says pray without ceasing. And there are a lot of things and a lot of reasons why we need to, re to pray and not to stop praying. Because God is a God of, God of hearing or hearing praying God. So we need to continue to pray. The Lord Jesus Christ pray. How much more? We, with this, with this finite being, as a finite being, not to pray. We need to pray every day. The Bible says pray without ceasing. It means that it, must, it needs to be our regular activity. We should not stop praying. In, in, in Luke, the Bible, Jesus Christ encouraged the disciples, pray. We should keep on praying and not to faint. Yeah. We should give thanks. In verse 18, in everything, give thanks. That is a wonderful song. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. When you face trials, what are you going to do? You're going to mourn? You're going to be discouraged. You're going to be co to complain. No, it is time to what? 
to thank God. It's time to thank God. Why? Because it is the will of God. If you know that God knows everything and He is doing everything for our good, then we need to thank Him even in tough times. Even those in, in, in life circumstances that we cannot understand. It's hard to thank God. It's hard to rejoice when life is tough. But it is the most sweetest moment for a Christian to thank the Lord during hard time. Uh, we didn't experience, I was there when the Taal volcano erupted in San Luis, Batangas. After the preaching, we went out, we ate. After a while, we heard a commotion outside. They said, Taal volcano erupted. We went out and a, a, what do you call this? A steam of smoke is arising. We haven't realized the, the, the ultimate outcome of that uh, eruption. The first two days, the, uh, the ash pool is this high. But after five days, it is six feet high already. And there are some Christians who are living there. Non-Christian, Christian were affected. If you are in that situation, sometimes it's hard to rejoice and to thank God. But if we will acknowledge that everything is for our good, we can give thanks. Give thanks. Quench not the Holy Spirit. It is a command. It means that we need to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit in our life. Daily. Despite not prophesying. We need to enjoy hearing preaching. Amen. Amen. That's the reason why we need to attend every services in our church. Don't fail. Remember the illustration? Not the money. <laughs> no, no more. <laughs> you remember it? You don't know what will happen. God has stored something for you every service. Amen. So don't fail to attend services. When I, when I went back, 1985, I never failed attending church. I have failed so many years, for six years. Vaccinated, I haven't. For a while, I will attend. The following day, we will not attend. But praise God, by the grace of God, I never fail attending church. There I find my beautiful wife by attending church. If I, <laughs> he saw me during my backsliding uh, stage. I was lying in a coach with a big palangana. What is palangana? Basin. Basin. Early in the morning. Uh, there are good friends with my sister. And she opened the door of our apartment and saw me lying and calling the uwak. You know the uwak? Uwak! Hangover. Early in the morning. And he said, she said in, his, in, her, in her mind, Sa Tagalog, kawawa naman ang mapapangasawa nito. I pity the woman who is going to marry this guy. Two years after, we got married. Kaya ngayon, he is suffering. <laughs> no, no, no. He is re she is rejoicing. Why? Because something happens. I didn't continue lying down in the coach, calling the walk. No more. God changed my life. And it changed her mind as well. So, Despite that prophesying, prove all things, and we're going to focus on these things. Abstain from all appearances of evil. Look at your friend behind, uh, beside you. Tell her or tell him, abstain from all appearances of evil. 
I'm not evil. <laughs> if you think she is, then abstain from all appearances of evil. Evil communication corrupt what? Good manners. So you abstain. Learn who you will associate with. It is eight command, but we're going to focus on verse 21. We are commanded to prove all things. To prove all things means two things. This is a short message. I hope you will end up 11 o'clock. But two things that we can learn from this text. Number one is this. The meaning of proving is this. To test, examine, to prove. To scrutinize. To see whether a thing is genuine or not. So many people is being deceived. Why? Because they don't know what is real. Have you bought here so many fake things, right? Fake. May fake cell phone. May fake, uh, what you call this, bag. May fake. Everything is being fake. Fake news. Fake, news, fake Christian. <laughs> is that a story about a, a group of people who attended this church and they are so good in cleaning <laughs> and all of a sudden they saw everything is cleaned why? because they took everything beware we need to prove all things starting from what you hear here down to the, what you have what you're going to read and hear and learn from the internet. Yeah. Prove all things. So it is a personal responsibility for every Christian right. to prove all things. Yeah. Be a Berean. It is not the pastor's responsibility. It is each and every one of us responsibility. Right. You prove it. Don't just believe everything. Especially nowadays, there are so many fakes. You see a lady, beautiful lady, in Thailand, beautiful. <laughs> there is a saying, you need to check up. <laughs> if it is real or not. Because you are going to end up with a fake. Because of so many transformation that is happening. They look so beautiful. Have you? <laughs> because so many cosmetic, so many. And there is a, there is a, a couple who was separated because the man just found out that his, her, his wife is a fake. She thought she is so beautiful, white skin. But when the, her wife gave birth, she cannot accept it. He, she, he compared the, her child, her, her firstborn baby girl, to the face of the mother. And so what did she did? And what he did? He searched and proved. Is this my? Real son or daughter? DNA. It is. What happened? So she, he found out that the face of her wife is a fake. <laughs> so many fake. Don't be deceived. It is essential and prime importance that we know first what is true so that we will be Spared. The reason so many people were being deceived is because they lack the knowledge of God Himself. The reason so many Christians is being exploited nowadays is because they lack the knowledge about God and His words. So it is important to know what is truth, what is the truth, so that we can identify. The fake. Paul's teaching is being proliferated. So what do we need, what do we need to do? Know the truth. Do you know the bank teller? 
They don't use, they don't need to use the, what you call this, the uh, violet ray uh, uh, scanner. They just touch it. How do you know, how did they know that it is a fake money? By practicing to hold the true bill. Every day. And as soon as they touch something different, they know it is a fake. So they will put it in the process so that they will be sure that it is fake or real. So knowing the truth, we need, uh, knowing the fake, we need to focus on what is true. There is a verse in the Bible in Daniel chapter 11, verse uh, 28 and 32. Look, look at me in Daniel chapter 11. Talking about exploitation. Do you know that the word exploits is only found twice in the Bible? And it is found in Daniel chapter 11. And that two words, verse 28 and verse 32, has two different meanings. Two different meanings. In verse 28, what is it? Then shall he return into the land with great riches. Talking about uh, the conquest of Alexander the Great. If you're going to read the whole chapter. Great riches. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant or the covenant people of God. And he shall do exploits. If, it is, if you're going to read it in, in what you call this, uh, in the printed paper, it is in italic. It means that the writer or the interpreter add these words so that we will understand the thoughts of what is being explained. But it is part of the word of God. Okay? exploit and return to his own land the word exploit in this verse means uh, uh, to to benefit unfairly from the work of someone it is the the working of a ruling class which exploited the workers it means to take advantage of to make use to abuse impose to pray play to misuse to entreat to bleed and some people are like this. They will capitalize with your weakness. Because they are strong, because they are intellectual, because they have power, they will exploit the weakness of their people. And if you don't know the truth, they will exploit your life. They will take advantage of what you have. It is a taking advantage for personal gain. They will bleed you until nothing is left. Do you know the scammers? That is the work of the scammers. And because of your weakness, because what is, they know what you want, what you desire, and your weakness, they will manipulate you through his good work. Some people were being scammed, even Christian. And that's the reason why you're having a hard time trusting me last night. Because you thought I will scam you. That's the reason why. And some churches, when I did it, they are running, smiling, enjoying. I did it in Qatar. Everyone is, wants to come forward because they trust me. But some of you here. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did it here? Uh, no. <laughs> that is original. But because you experience somebody who exploited you, maybe. That's the reason why you have a hard time trusting other people. Why? Because you experience it. So many. The, you think that is a pyramid scam. Right? <laughs> that is the, the, the thought of the pyramid scam. They will say, oh, you, have, you, you need some money? We have a, this is a good investment. Give me 10,000, it will earn within a month. It will double. And if you will roll it up, it will triple. And within one year, you will become millionaires. And everything is, your mind start to calculate. You think, this is a good investment. 
they will use good words and because you're weak because your heart is filled with what I'm sorry Christian because of greed because we fail to read this word and take heed to what God told us to abstain from and we fall we invite other people <laughs> we recruit how did I know it because I was victimized <laughs> <laughs> we, we're in the same flesh yeah. but it gave me more wisdom how to avoid it some people will exploit our lives scammers, manipulator some use, use the bible That's the reason why there is a verse that should warn us. There are post doctrine, post teaching from without, and sometimes among our ranks. They use the Bible as their reference as well, just for personal gain. Second Peter chapter two, verse one and three. But there are some. There were false prophet. Also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers. Second Peter chapter two verse one and three. Teach him among you, who freely shall bring in damnable heresy. Some are not conscious that it is already heresy, because they they think that what they they say is absolute. Some are good preachers. Some are intellectuals. Fribly and bring damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that bought them. If somebody will introduce you that Jesus Christ is not 100% God and 100% man, that is heresy. Yeah. And you need to know how to prove those words to his scriptures. Many shall follow their per pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And sometimes we're going to be blamed. Why? Because we are in the same group. They will think that we are the same because we are in the same group. But I hope we will take a stand and prove to the world that we are different. Amen. Precious ways. They will try. Uh, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness they shall. Uh, shall they with feigned words. Even it means that beguiling words. Make merchandise of you. It means that they will take advantage of you. They will use you to bring them up. And they spoil everything that we have. Whose judgment now of long time lingereth not. And their damnations lumber not. How can we avoid it? The way is, best way to know the fake is to know the truth. Amen. That's the reason why in verse 32, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, the people, look at it, true covetousness, and such as do wickedly against the holy covenant, against the covenant, shall he corrupt by platteries. But the people that know their God shall be what? strong it means that you will be strong you will be knowledgeable and it will spare you 
for being exploited. Because you're strong. Those people who will exploit will use their strength. But because you know God, you will be strong. And you will be spared from this kind of people. So know God. Know Him. Be strong by knowing Him. Here in this verse, the word exploit means to have a bearing fiat. Make full use. To derive benefit from. Utilize. Make use. Put to use. Use to good advantage. It means that you're going to know the truth. You're going to be secure. Your mind will be secure. You will be spared. Because you know the truth. Don't let yourself to be exploited this 2020. This is a good thing. But do exploit this 2020. Don't exploit other people. But do exploit for the glory of God. Don't take advantage of other people. But help them to reach their potential. Help them because you're strong. Draw out from them their, their strong potential for the glory of God. And for His glory. Know Him. Grow in Him this 2020. There are so many things that encourage us to know and learn more from Him. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And we can continue to upgrade ourselves by adding to our faith, virtue, and so many things that was mentioned in 2 Peter chapter 2, starting from verse 5 up to verse 8. Know Him. There is power in knowing Him. And in order to know Him, we must learn to empty ourselves with the things that hold That, that is contrary to what His Word is saying. Empty yourself. Oh, count it all down, He says. Count it all down because it is for His glory. For the excellency of the knowledge of Him. Let's have a renewed passion for the Word of God. I hope this is still fresh. We will start a new month. Oh, this is the first? Yeah, we just started a new day for the first month. I hope you have this, you already decided to read the Bible daily once again. For the purpose of knowing Him. You're going to have your Bible school? That's good. It will give you an opportunity to know Him more so that you can prove all things for His glory. As you read the Bible, behold His beauty, behold His plan, behold His will, behold His love, behold what pleases Him. Just behold Him. Isaiah chapter 49 and 10. It is a, an exhortation that God gave to Isaiah to behold their God. The excellency of who God is. If you are here this morning, I hope you will prove the reason why you are in that religion. I hope you will prove yourself if you are 100% sure that what you're doing will guarantee your salvation. Examine yourself whether you are in the faith. Look on the scriptures. Some of you are playing like a Christian. Attending church does not make you a Christian. Reading the Bible does not make you a Christian. Doing good things does not guarantee you of going to heaven. 
you prove all things. If I'm going to ask you today, are you sure that you are going to heaven 100%? Sure? I hope you can confidently say to yourself that I know the way, I understand the way, and I am going that way. There's a verse in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. The Bible says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into this world to what? To save sinner of whom I am chief. If you're going to bisect these words, we will understand the, this is a nutshell of God's salvation. Here we can understand that Jesus Christ came for you. Why? Because everyone in this room is a sinner. If you're not going to identify yourself and accept this truth that is being presented in this verse, you cannot be saved. You need to realize that you are a sinner. And the reason why Jesus Christ came is that you need a Savior. You are a sinner. You must realize that you are a sinner. Accept it. Actually, this, this is no problem to everyone. Because we know within our heart that we already violate some laws that declare us as a sinner. It is easy. Even a child can accept this. But also in this verse, you need to realize that sin has consequence. If there is no consequence, Jesus Christ will not come. The truthfulness of the, and the reality that sin has consequence is that Jesus Christ need to come and to die for our sin. His death is a clear indication that there is consequence for sin. He died for what? For sinners. And there is a song that was sung a while ago that all our sin was been placed in him. The reason why he died? Because of sin. The reason why you are dying and going and die is because of sin. The consequence of sin is what? Death. For the wages of sin is death. You must realize and accept the sin has consequence. And that is separation from God. You must realize that you cannot save yourself. We cannot go up. That's the reason why he needs to go down. Jesus Christ is not in heaven encouraging us. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. No. He just say, you believe. And that will settle it. You must realize that you are, you need to repent and accept Jesus Christ as your only personal Savior. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. It means everybody needs to accept this. Whether you're a Thai, you're a Buddhist, you're a Muslim, whether, whatever ethnics or whatever religion you are in, you need to accept it. It is worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save you and me. And if you want to take this word Personally, you need to repent from your sin, from your wrong belief, and accept that Jesus Christ is your only Savior. I hope this word will prove something in your life that will put the test of what you believe and compare it to the truth that was given through these words. Going back to our text, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. The second meaning of this word, prove, means to try it to yourself. What is good of knowing what is true and not living it and accepting it to your life? Those, there are so many people who know what is true but still believe a lie. Somebody says the most foolish person in the world is those people who heard the truth 
knows the truth, but still believe the lie. If you really believe and proven that this is true, then we need to practice it. That's the reason why the other words for the, uh, the other meaning for this proving is practicing. It means after you prove it that it is true, then practice it. All things that you find true in this word, practice it. Don't don't pick for yourself what you want to follow. Follow, prove all things. Practice all things what is real. Is, is it good to read the Bible? Then read it. Some people, well, just read it. Read the Bible, read the Bible. Are you reading it? Well, I don't have time. You're not really believing it. Do you believe that going to church is good? Then attend every service. Amen. Do you believe that learning the Bible is good? I, if I were you, and I have a little knowledge about the Word of God, I'm going to enroll myself. When I enrolled in our Bible school, I enrolled because I want to know the truth. That's all. Not because I want to be a pastor. Not because I want to be better than other people. No. I just want to know what is true. I want to to saturate my mind of what is true that will help me to be a better Christian. That's all. Prove all things. Learn. And as you learn, apply it. And let the world see what you believe. Prove all things. It is imperative point number two. To all who know God and believe His word. To live according to what is written in this book. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think of these things. It means that is the testing time. You prove those things through this through this verse. Don't believe everything. Test if it is true. Then verse 9, those things which ye have what which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, what? Do. That is the practicing time. And the God of peace shall be with you. Live by faith. Practicing what is, what you believe in this book, practicing it personally, means living by faith. You believe it, then you practice it. Live by it. Look and live your life. Not only through these pages, but through the eyes of what you believe. It means through the eyes of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 is a chapter that mentions who live by faith. Verse 1 gives the meaning. Verse 3 explains the benefit. Through faith we understand. Do you have so many questions in life? Sometimes there are things that will happen in our life that we cannot comprehend. Who can explain what happened to Ta'al people? But through faith, we can understand that all things work together for good. Through faith, we understand that the Word was framed by the Word of God. Those things that we cannot understand can be comprehended only by faith. So live by faith. Look on things through the eyes of faith. Verse 6 explains the importance of faith because through faith, only by faith we can please God. And the rest of the verses is a showcase of those people who live and practice what they believe that is true. They live by faith. 
By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, and so on and so on. So live by faith. Live a life by faith to help you live a life with confidence. Don't be ashamed of the gospel because it is true. Just preach it. Face each day with confidence. If you're going to live by faith, it will give you confidence. If you will, after proving all things, you practice what you believe, it will give you confidence. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, being confident of this very thing. Why Paul is so confident even though he was in prison? Even though he was secluded and separated from his people? Why is it he so confident? Being confident of this very thing. That he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Because he believed whatever circumstances that happened in his life, what he started in your life, will be finished. He will be gone. But God's work will continue. I praise the Lord, even though we are gone, the work that was started in your life will continue. Why? Because God is the one who started it, not us. But the preacher, it is God. And He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord that He started a good work in my life way back in 1979. And it is continue, and He is continue working in my life. You're looking at these people. You, if you're a Cambodian, you got saved. God started a good work in your life. And He will perform it and make sure that what He started, He will finish it. He will finish it. That gives me confidence in my work in Thailand. He will continue. He will work until He will see that everything is finished. It will give us confidence. Confidence of continuing our work. This thought reminds me about a story of a dying person. He's a dying person. He has only seven days to live. So he called up his pastor. Pastor, I'm a dying person. I have only seven days to live. And he made a request. He told his pastor, Pastor, will you perform my uh, funeral service? Yeah, that's no problem. That is my duties and responsibility, and I love to perform your funeral service. Thank you, Pastor. I have another request. Make my coffin open so that the people can see me clearly. Well, that, 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 no problem. We're going to ask the uh, the uh, what you call this the funeral parlor to open and to make sure that you look good in that coffin my final request is this pastor put a pork in my hand a fork yeah fork yeah i know you are dying but why fork oh yeah, I just want to remind the people of what I believe. And he explained. Uh, because I have an experience in my life when I was a child that the, my father always brought me to a beautiful restaurant. They serve sumptuous food. We eat. We enjoy the food. And after we eat, we eat all those good food. My father will ask me, to keep the fork. Always remind me, keep the fork. The best is yet to come. So the waiter will take all those empty dishes or empty plate and soon enough, the waiter will bring the best, the dessert. Every day, he, he was reminded with that fork that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. 
So, Pastor, please remind the people that is coming that even in death, the best is yet to come. He has begun a good work. He will not abandon us. And He will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. That even in death, we can say, the best is yet to come. Even in hardship, the best is yet to come. So every day, if you're a Christian, you can tell to yourself, because God has given us and begun a good work in me. Tomorrow, I can experience with confidence, and I can say, the best is yet to come. You will face trial, the best is yet to come. Tomorrow will be different. I'm going to experience the best tomorrow. You have experienced so many things during the 15th year of this church. The best is yet to come, Pastor. Amen. You will experience trials. You're going to experience some troubles. Some low uh, point of your life will be experienced. But always be remember, reminded, the best is yet to come. That is living by faith. Looking on the things that is happening to you as God's way of performing a good work in our life. The best is yet to come. Amen. Even in death, we can say with a smile, yes, the best is yet to come. Why? We're going to be in the presence of our Lord. Amen. We're going to see the beauty of what He has prepared for us. There's a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor enter into the mind or heart of man what God has prepared for them that what? Love Him. So if you love God, you're going to see better things. If you love God more, you're going to see better than what you have done when you love Him, when you less love Him. It means that if you grow in loving the Lord, you're going to see more of what He had prepared for you. So it gives us confidence. Living what we believe gives us confidence. Yes, trials will come. Sometimes it ruins our life. Sometimes it destroys our plan. But the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Living by faith is looking unto Jesus as a central focus, focal point of our life. Look everything that will happen to you on the, on the point Focal point. As Jesus as the focus of our focal point. What do I mean? When Jesus is in the center of our life, everything will fall into the right perspective. In taking a picture, if you're going to use the DL, DLSR, DSR. Yeah, that's it. Sometimes you need to you focus even in a distance. If you focus on the right, on, on the things that you want to see, everything will be blurred. If you're going to use the uh, telephoto, you're going to take a picture and you want to take a picture of this, all of those background will be blurred. Why? Because you are centering to what you want to see. In our Christian life, if we are going to live by faith, after proving all things, we are going to practice what we believe and put Jesus Christ in the center of everything. Trials will come, but it will be blurred why because we will see Jesus when you face trials look unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith when your life is facing heavy battle look unto God just like what Jehoshaphat did in 2nd Chronicles chapter 2 verse 12 and we're not going to look on that and when you experience victory you focus on Jesus, not on yourself. That is proving 
all things. Knowing what is true and applying it to yourself so that other people who does not read the Bible will see what we have proven that is true. Let us close our eyes and let us bow down our heads. My prayer for you this morning is that you, together with this church, will strive to prove all things in the light of His Word by knowing Him and His truth. Not, know, not only knowing Him, but by living by faith according to what you have learned from His Word. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this church for their desire to know more about you to expose what is wrong but I pray Father that as they prove all things that they will leave what they believe that is true So that other people will see through their lives what they really believe. Especially in this, in this place where most people are not reading your word. I pray, Father, that they will see Jesus in each lives of these believers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.